My spat with the anarchists continues. However, I'd like to offer an olive branch. There is much that I can agree with anarchists on, and other than the really crazy whack jobs who want to usher in a dystopian Darwinian dog-eat-dog nightmare world. Okay, that was a bad start. We all have similar goals, desires, and aspirations, anarchists included. Even the really stupid ones eagerly sawing on their own noses despite their face. And what do you say to a cop? Take off, cop! He loves his cup of tea. Take off! There you go. Take off! Sorry, sorry, look. Third time lucky, okay? Here we go. Many anarchists want the same things I want. A just world, where people can get on with their lives as they like, marry whom they choose, fuck whomever wants to fuck them, and in whatever position, orifice, or setting is agreeable to both or all parties involved. To spend their money as they like, and to earn it as they like. To reject the manufactured agendas of artificial political constructs which basically means all of our nation states. To live without the threat of powerful militaries for which they are paying visiting death and destruction on them or in their name. I, I totally don't look fat on this, right? I'll even concede that it is possible that this society will emerge spontaneously given the legal and political framework that already exists in the world. The lip service that the liberal democracies pay to the idea of equality and human rights has already introduced very obvious and highly public tensions when contrasted with their actual behavior toward those outside their circle of inclusion. However, this is not anarchy. And even if it arrives, it still won't be anarchy. It will be governance. Several thousand years of political evolution have brought us to the point where roughly 55% of humanity live in jurisdictions where we can say anything we like, including overt and obvious lies or slander about those in power without the merest fear of repercussion. We can worship as we choose and express our freedom with the most startling displays of economic and sexual deviancy the world has ever seen. It's quite unprecedented. However, while the society we all want might emerge, it might not. And the 10,000 nuclear weapons currently idling in silos all around the world could put a sudden and definitive stop to all of our aspirations. The embryonic, anarchic society we see emerging all around us faces its greatest threat not from the democratic institutions that made it possible, but from the mountains of ordnance scattered around our planet and the militaries that control those weapons. This is the common enemy that we face, and only a legitimate, democratically elected global body of representatives can pull the iron teeth of these killing machines and do it not by drawing all the militaries to itself, but by criminalizing their use prosecuting the individuals that authorize their use and creating an environment where the world's militaries become institutional appendices, atrophy, and eventually can be cut out of the global body altogether. If you reject the viability of this process, as I've outlined it here, on the not unreasonable grounds perhaps that only force will bring these institutions to their knees, what could anarchy possibly have to offer that won't result in billions of deaths and reduce the planet to a cinder. At the international level, anarchy isn't the solution, it's the problem! Global governance is not about absolute power, it's about extending the legal framework that exists within our nation states that allows us to go about our business unmolested, as long as we respect the rights of others to go about their business unmolested. And if you still don't get it, you are a f Ah, there you are. I think we got cut off. Well, I hope this has been helpful in clarifying my position and illustrating the common ground that exists within our respective struggles. Fist bump, anyone? Man? <laughs> the referendum is on the right.